to the indigenous people of North America, the Red Road, the natural way of being, is one of the spokes in the wheel. And in the center is where Creator is, where all things come from. When we talk about the spokes in the wheel, one can look at it as the medicine wheel with the four colors, the four ages, the four seasons. All over this world, there are different peoples of different cultures, different beliefs, and they all come from the same place, that we are all part of one being. We are all related. Each culture was gifted its own language, its own way, its own ceremonies, its own way of being in creation. A lot of us are seeking things outside of ourself when really it's within ourselves. And when we realize this and call upon spirit to be with us, it's already there. So everything is here working with us and we are the ones that are supposed to serve and be a part of creation. The Red Road is living with, being with creation, acknowledging that we are all related. It's not easy. The red road is not for everyone. Uh, people are attracted to it because they have lost their way. They have been uh, disconnected, spiritually industrialized. They have been uh, taken away from who they're supposed to be. There's been a process where all of us have been disconnected. All around the world throughout time, you will see that people sat in circles. People sat around the fire. People sat with a drum, people sang songs, people were connected to the earth where they were at. People had relationships with the plants, with the fishes, with the birds. And so people are attracted to the natural way because they want to be reconnected. It is our strong belief that through the crying for a dream, the Hamblecha vision quest ceremony, that we can help people reconnect to themselves find their purpose, help them talk and sit with their ancestors to develop relationships again with their ancestors and themselves to find their way in life. The red road is so easy that it's difficult. And what will happen when somebody starts coming onto the red road and really deciding this is what they want is there are tests, there are distractions, there are uh, things in life that will pull you off of that. Knowing that all things are alive, all things are awake and aware and have consciousness, you will learn to conduct yourself in a different manner, not out of fear, but out of serving, out of joy and being with. The natural way of being on the red road is acknowledging and understanding that all of creation, everything is alive. It has spirit. It has being. And when you view the world and live in the world in this way, you learn to walk with respect, to honor all things in creation. And it brings you to have a deeper understanding of who you are and how you conduct yourself. To briefly talk about how the Red Road is experienced and lived today, we have to look at the efforts of AIM, the American Indian Movement. AIM gave voice to the people. AIM was asked to come to Wounded Knee in South Dakota to address a lot of atrocities. Generally what happened is Fool's Crow, Leonard Crow Dog, and many others helped share the sacred rites to help people find their way and a lot of different natives, a lot of people from other cultures came together from all over North America. There are over 570 different cultures. Everybody took on the Red Road as a way of being. And within that, there was a development of what's called Pan-Indianism. When you walk out of alignment, it shows and, um, you take on the darker side of life, the black road. I had to learn 
the ways of the Black Road to fully understand it, succumbing to addiction, alcoholism, and within that, I found what uh, was not in alignment. And it took the Red Road, it took nature, and a lot of good people to help me on my road. Each of us has our own road. And when you talk about these things, you will find that we are all related. We all come from the same place. We just have our own relationships with creation, with creator. When you realize and acknowledge that all things in creation are alive and has spirit, you know the world is watching you. Your ancestors are watching you. The spirits in all the directions are watching you. They are alive, awake and aware and demand and deserve respect. When you realize this, you conduct yourself in a better way. You move through life in a better way. You treat things in a better way. You get out of it what you put into it. And over time, you'll see it pays off. It's all hard work, one step at a time. And over time, that road will be seen by others, seen by the world. The gift of the pipe from the white buffalo calf woman came with seven sacred rites. The three common ones are the Inipi, the rite of purification, the sweat lodge, the Hamblecha, the crying for a vision, and the Wiwangi Wichapi, the sun dance ceremony. And all of these include the sacred pipe, the Chinupa. One way to explain how the ceremonies helps us is the first ceremony, the simplest of ceremony of smudging. All four elements, earth, air, fire, water, are present to help us to purify ourselves, our spaces, our areas, our lives. And all the other ceremonies encompass this. There's a piece of all of creation. There's all the directions. The past, present, future is all there within the ceremonies. And that's how we realign ourselves, how we purify and clean off our distractions, our hurts, how to regain and retain balance. One of the values and the things to practice is praying. And within praying, it's not just talking to your ancestors, talking to your spirit helpers or your guides. It's not just talking to creator. It's about acknowledging that they are there to help you and being able to be silent, to develop your communication and understanding with spirit and learning to listen and developing that relationship, something that you'll be able to count on, something that you can trust. And as you move on and develop your relationship, um, you can start having wider and deeper conversations and understandings with spirit. And within that, you will learn you are not alone. Everything is here with you. I will tell you this right now, the spirits do not speak English. They can come to you in picture form through your gut feelings, through your instinct. If you have a hinky feeling, one of them might be telling you the truth about something. When you find a great joy when you're doing something, knitting, drawing, when you're, you're finding a real joy, that is your ancestors coming back and living through you as they come from the stars and the spirit world. They're actually walking and sitting inside of you, celebrating life with you. And that's when you are in alignment. You find this joy that brings joy to others, that serves others, and that's usually when you can tell where your talents are, where you serve. 